Well, on this one here, once again, we're dealing with a definite integral because we have an upper and lower limit. Well, you have two options for choosing u, either the top or the bottom. Well, is the derivative of the top anything similar to the bottom? It would, but we got this one hanging around. However, if you let u be the bottom and you take the derivative of that, the one disappears, so you don't have to be concerned about that showing up on top. So we get a du to be a 2 cosine dt, or 2t dt. Well, you'll notice in our problem, we only have a cosine 2t hanging around. We don't have that 2. So in other words, you've got to multiply both sides by a half to get rid of that. Well, you might be saying, well, now we can just go ahead and write our integral. We would have a u on the bottom, and we would have a 1 half du on the top. That is true, but since it's a definite integral, we need to go ahead and adjust our limits, because right now our limits are in terms of t. When we rewrite it, it'll be with u's in it, so we'll need to have these in terms of u's. So we know u is 1 plus sine 2t. Well, our first t is pi over 4, so we plug pi over 4 into what our u is. 2 times this, sine of that plus 1, simplifies down when you remember your trig to a 2. Then we've got to plug our other u in, which is 0. Plug 0 in, so 1 plus sine of 2 times 0. 2 times 0, 0, sine of 0 plus 1 gives us 1. So we now have our new limits for our u. Our lower limit is 1. Our upper limit is 2. Now, you might be wondering, where does that 1 half come from? Well, that comes from du being 1 half du. And remember, you can pull your constants in front. We had said the bottom was our u. The 2, or cosine 2t dt was our du. Well, we need to integrate this. When we integrate this, we're going to still have that 1 half. 1 over u, you should remember, is your natural log. The natural log... Now there is no plus c, so all we have to do is integrate it from 2 to 0, or evaluate it from 2 to 0. So you plug in your 2 minus what you get when you plug in your 1. Now remember, natural log of 1 is really e to what power is 1, and that's 0, so it's not needed. So it's just 1 half natural log of 2. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one here then. Well, we're going to let u represent what we have on the inside. If u is what we have on the inside, then du ends up being a 2 dx. And yes, we have a dx hanging around, but we don't have a 2. So that's why we need a 1 half. But you notice we do have an x hanging around. We don't have an x down here. So what we need to do is we need to solve this right here for x. We solve this for x, and so we're going to add 1, divide by 2. And so we get x to be u plus 1 over 2. So now let's go ahead and substitute that in. Well, we know that this is our u. So we're going to have a u to the 1 half. We just said that our x was u plus 1 over 2. Our dx is the 1 half du. Well, your over 2 here, over 2 here gives you really a 1 fourth. So we'll pull that in front. Then we've eliminated the 2, so we're going to take this, distribute it through. And then that's how we get this right here. Remember, an x, when you multiply, you've got to add your exponents. Now, all we're going to do is just do a simple integration. You have your 1 fourth. You have to increase your exponent by 1, which gives you a 5 halves. 
So you got to have divide by five halves or multiply by two fifths. When you multiply two fifths times your one fourth, you get one tenth. Here you got to increase your exponent. Divide by that exponent or multiply by two thirds. <laughs> Sorry about that. And then you got to remember plus c because it's an indefinite integral. So we substitute in what u is. Dividing by 3 halves, which is multiplying by 2 thirds. 2 thirds times 1 fourth is the 1 sixth plus c. Well, we're going to go ahead and integrate this definite integral. Here we don't have to worry about plus c again. We're going to go ahead and let u represent the square root of the bottom. The square root of the bottom means when you square both sides here, you would get this. Well, you might be wondering why did we do that? That's because we got this just normal hang, normal old x hanging out on top. So we need to get an x equaling something with u's in it. So we need to go ahead and solve this for an x. So now we're going to have to add our 1, divide by 2, so we now know what x is. So we're going to come along and replace our x here on top with what we have there in yellow. We know this here will be our u. Well, we still have a dx hanging around. Well, to find our dx, we need to take the derivative of u. Well, remember, we're going to have to put our exponent in front because that's raised to the 1 half. Decrease your exponent by 1. Multiply it by the derivative of the inside. Your 2 undoes your 1 half in front. Now we just need a normal dx, so we got to get dx by itself. So we could divide both sides by this. Dividing by this with a negative exponent really puts it up on top. And so now we know what we're going to plug in for our dx, and that's this. However, isn't what we have right here in the very beginning just what our u is, the square root of a 2x minus 1? So we're going to replace our dx with this. Now, before we substitute stuff in, remember since it's a definite integral, we've got to change our bounds because these are in terms of x. We're going to rewrite it with u, so we've got to rewrite our bounds with u's. So this is what u is. Plug in your 1 into your u, and then you get your upper or lower limit to be 1. Take your 5, plug it in here. You get 10 minus 1, square root of that is 3. So we now know our upper and lower bounds. We substitute in our u, our d, dx. So we have 1 over u. This is what our x was. This is our dx. Now you'll notice that this u over here in the back undoes this u in the front, so they cancel. So we are left with our u squared plus 1. You might be wondering where does that divide by 2 go? Well, that's a constant, so I'm going to put it in front as a half. Now all we have to do is just our normal basic integration. We're going to have our 1 half. Increase your exponent by 1. Got to have a one-third in front or divide by three to offset that. Plus, increase your exponent by one. Then we've got to evaluate it from one to three. Could we change it all back into x's? Yes, but it's going to be easier just to evaluate it here. So plug in your three. You get 27 over three, which is nine. Plug in your three here. Plug in your one. You get a one-third. And then you get a one here. It's plus, but remember, this is in really in parentheses. You get distributed through the minus sign. And then you simplify it down, and we get 16 